My group started sequencing rare muscle disease patients about four years ago when I started the lab. One of the things that became clear very quickly was that um, when we found a genetic variant in our patients, we often didn't know whether or not that was actually a common variant in the general population or something that was specific to that individual. So one thing that would be extremely useful for our research was a very large data set of variation from the general population that we could use to understand whether a particular change that we found in our patient was actually common in the population or extremely rare. Fundamentally, EXAC is a massive collection of DNA sequencing data. Uh, basically what we did to build it is to take the raw sequencing data from a particular type of technology called exome sequencing. We took the raw data from over 60,000 people and we pulled all of that together into a single database that allows people to look at variation across that, any, any region of the exome and see how common it is. So this is the vision of Daniel MacArthur thinking, oh my gosh, we're sitting on a large amount of high quality genomic data that I think we can share with the world. And, and then next, the collaboration and also the leadership of a lot of senior scientists from all over the world to actually cut through the amount of paperwork. And then next, we required the world's most talented and also skilled computational biologists and software developers to build tools and framework to make this happen. And last, a team of very, very passionate scientists to make this um, data freely available to the world. Data sharing is absolutely critical for resources like Exac to exist. So without the generosity of our collaborators who were willing to give us the data set that, that allowed us to create the Exact resource, it would have been completely impossible to build this. What we found is that the, the heaviest use by far is by people who are actually sequencing patients and who want to look up a change that's found in those patients and see how common it is in the general population. And that's, that's really the use case that we built it for. I look at your eyes, you look at my eyes, point to the finger that's moving. So I'm a clinical geneticist and I see the patients and often have to decide which genetic test to order and how to discuss the results with them. The exact database gives us a sense of which variants are more common in which ancestral groups. And it gives us a sense of which variants are more likely to be loss of function variants and therefore more likely to be disease causing than other types of variants that are not. You know, as a physician, there are maybe three giant categories of work that you do with patients. There's curing if you can, there's management if you can't cure, and there's understanding whether or not you can manage or cure. And in genetic diseases, we are struggling with curing and managing, but it is fundamentally advantageous to families to understand what is the condition that they're dealing with. Not just understanding that it's genetic, not just understanding that it's dominantly inherited, for example, but understanding what gene is involved and what variant in that gene is involved. A lot of people say, okay, you have a rare disease, what does the diagnosis do? Uh, are we just getting better at delivering bad news? And I say no to that. For my condition, I know that it involves my heart. So what that means is I can actually be proactive and go and visit a heart specialist every year rather than whenever I think I should. And for other patients, when they get the correct diagnosis, they may have actually treatment for their disease. So all this time in their life, there, there was no cure for their disease. And now they're being told there is treatment. I know how it's like to wait over 10 years for the correct diagnosis. I know the frustration some of these patients feel and I know the joy that comes out of getting a diagnosis. EXAC is a wonderful example of sharing. It is an example where many different groups who painstakingly recruited patients and painstakingly sequenced them donated their data into a central consortium. And then that consortium created a tremendous tool with a lot of work that they freely gave back to everyone in the community. 
One of the primary reasons that we built XAC was to create a resource that would make it easier to diagnose rare disease patients. And we've been extremely gratified to see it now used to make diagnoses across thousands and thousands of rare disease families. And that's probably the part of XAC that I'm most proud of, is, is empowering that process of diagnosis um, across a whole range of different rare diseases.